Hi everyone, it's Wednesday Warriors and it's me, Arielle, and this week I'll be talking about anxiety. Anxiety often accompanies eating disorders, even when you're in recovery. I'm going to be talking about some ways that you can keep anxiety at bay or move through the anxiety in order to get to the other side of it where everything feels at least comfortable again. A really good thing to have is an anxiety list or an anxiety book or some sort of a piece of paper that you can go to, even if it's a piece of paper in the front of a notebook you already have or in the front of your journal or an index card in your planner, some place um, that you can go to very easily because it's usually with something that you have with you or on you. What happens with anxiety is that when we're in it, when we're struggling, whether it's because we're having a panic attack or we're just feeling extremely nervous and uncomfortable, or we are in some kind of an overwhelming situation, it's very difficult to, in that moment, in that mindset, think of something, think of something that's going to help us. It's sort of like when there's something that you want to say to someone and you only think about that something after the fact. You can't think of it in the moment. Anxiety is a lot like that. When the anxiety has passed later that day or the next day, you might think of a bunch of things that you could have tried, but in the moment there was no way you could wrap your head around them. So having an anxiety list or a card or something um, that will have some options for you, some examples of what you can do when that anxiety hits really badly and you're in the midst of it, is really good because you did the thinking ahead of time and you just have it at your fingertips and just sort of seeing it there and knowing all you have to do is pick one of those things is is such an easy task. You really don't have to call it an anxiety list. I know we've talked before about a coping bank or a wellness toolbox. It's the same concept and you can use these things uh, tailored to anxiety situations or they can just be things that might help you in a variety of situations. But rather than have an actual box or an actual bank or some place where you're keeping slips of paper or ideas, I think it's really great to have a card that's in your purse, in your wallet, in your planner, somewhere that's always accessible to you, somewhere where you can go right to it without thinking, oh, I'm having an anxiety attack. I think I'll go and find my wellness toolbox or my coping bank, you know, where I keep that in my bedroom with the rest of my stuff for recovery. It's just a little bit too much work. It's just a little bit too much thinking. And and we know we don't think like that when, they're, when we're in the midst of a crisis. So just for the sake of example, let's say it's a card that you're going to keep in your wallet or in your purse. And on this card, you can just write the top word anxiety. And you know that everything you list under it are things that may help you when you are having very bad anxiety. One thing that I think about labeling your list on your card or, or your notebook or wherever you keep it, if you label it with the heading anxiety and that works for you, that's perfectly fine. But sometimes when we're already having anxiety and we look at something where there's a big bold word that says anxiety, then everything that we read under it doesn't quite feel very comforting, doesn't feel very calming. So instead, I would advise you maybe to choose a word that is that way for you. So maybe you're going to have a list that's going to help get you out of anxiety, obviously, and you can call it calm. And the top of your list will have a big word calm on it. Or maybe it will have the big word comfort. Um, maybe it won't even be one word. Maybe it'll just be the sentence, it will be okay. And then you're going to list your things underneath that. Maybe it will be, this too shall pass, and you're going to list everything underneath it. But I would really suggest that you find some comforting way of talking to yourself and label your list with that word or that sentence, because I think it starts to train your thinking that every time you look at this, you know you're going to pick an option. You know the anxiety is going to pass. It's the reassurance without having to reassure Sure yourself in the moment and give yourself a pep talk in the moment because you did it beforehand. So it's the calm you talking to the anxious you. And the things that can go on your list are going to be very unique to you. The same thing with a wellness toolbox or a coping bank or any of those things. Some people love to take a long walk. Some people will become more anxious if they walk somewhere by themselves when they're having anxiety. Um, so you really have to think about things that help you, things that you like, things that you enjoy, and that make you feel very calm. I think 
Calm is a very good word to keep in mind when we're talking about anxiety and ways to combat the anxiety. So certainly simple things should be on that list, like call mom if mom is a comforting presence for you. Um, if calling someone else or getting in touch with someone else makes you feel somehow you're bothering them or you're more of a burden and then gives you more anxiety, we don't want that on the list because we want to ease the anxiety, we want to lessen it, we don't want to make it any worse than it already is. So you just want to be aware of that. And again, you're going to make this list before you're having anxiety. So you're going to have a lot of time to think about what you want to put on there and a lot of time to think about the person you are and the things that you will find helpful. Sometimes doing something very routine helps people when they're dealing with anxiety. For example, if you need to make dinner for that night or for the next night and you haven't done it yet, when you're having an anxiety attack or when you're just having a very overwhelming anxiety and you're not sure how to get yourself out of it and how to deal with it and how to push through, doing something that just sort of causes you to go through the motions when you're not thinking very much and then you come to the end of your task, you, you might realize that the anxiety is much, much less or it's gone altogether. So something like making dinner, if you have on your list, make a meal, and when you're having anxiety, you decide to do that, you might make your dinner for that night or for the, the next day. And as you look at the recipe or as you mix the ingredients or as you cook and you, you, know, you set the oven, you set the timer, you do everything, by the time that you're finished, your anxiety probably will be less because it hasn't been at the forefront of your mind. You've had to focus on some kind of a menial task. This is the same reason that cleaning or organizing works really well when people are dealing with anxiety. You may even have tried this before or know someone that really feels comforted by the act of cleaning or organizing. If you're having very bad anxiety or there's something on your mind, sometimes just taking all your drawers and going through everything that's in them and getting them back into tip-top shape and making sure that everything is organized to your liking. By the time you're done with that task in an hour or in two hours, you feel better. And don't overlook the simple things, like petting a pet. You know, it might seem silly to us when you think, well, if I'm an animal lover, I pet my pet all the time. Why is that going to help my anxiety? But if you see it on a list with the heading that says comfort or calm or whatever word you choose, and then you make yourself go over to your dog or to your cat or whatever your pet is, and you pet your pet and you make yourself do it for five minutes, Maybe you look at a clock and you say, okay, it's 5 o'clock at 5.05. I'm going to stop petting my cat. Um, it might seem silly to you while you're doing it. You might think, this is the last thing I want to be doing when I feel so wound up with anxiety. But it can really help because by the time you're done, if you are petting the pet the entire time, there's something very therapeutic about it, especially if you already really love animals and have a pet. Um, Obviously, it's good for the pet because they're feeling loved and connected, but you're feeling connected to something. You're feeling that act of comfort because you are moving your hand across the back or across the head of an animal. And for some reason, it has very, very, very powerful effects. You know, don't underestimate yourself. Anxiety can be big and bad and overwhelming, but you don't have to give it more power than yourself. It doesn't have to be more powerful than you are. Does it have a lot of power? Sometimes, yes, it does. And that's what makes it so scary, and that's what makes it feel so indestructible. But you can destroy the anxiety. You can at least make it less. You know, maybe you feel like it's up here. Maybe you can get it down here, and it's still there, but you're working through it. And you feel like you're on top of it. You're above it. It's not all-encompassing. It's not more powerful than you are, and it, that's really important, too. And that might be a really good heading for your anxiety list. Instead of calling it calm or comfort, you can call it, I have the power. So if your list says, I have the power, and then all those things that are going to be comforting and calming to you, maybe that'll do the trick. And again, I'm not saying these things are foolproof, and your anxiety is going to be gone as soon as you try them and everything will be perfect. It's, it's an exercise in learning yourself and what works and in training yourself to know that you can do this and you can get through and the anxiety isn't bigger than you are. Healthy coping mechanisms are out there. There's so many. There's so many more healthy coping mechanisms than there are bad ones. You just have to think about them and understand that 
no coping mechanism is too small. If something's going to work for you, put it on that list. The more things you have on that list to choose from when you're having a really bad anxious moment, the better. Because if you have three things on there and none of those things seem to speak to you that day when you're having anxiety, you're going to again be become caught. But if you have 10 things on that list, or if you have 15 or even 20 things on that list, you're going to automatically be able to say, okay, I think I can try this. Um, and the same thing too, if something doesn't seem to work, you can say, that didn't really quite work, I think I'm going to try this now. And you can go through as many things on the list as you have to before you feel that calm. I wish you all the best of luck. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you next time.